Good evening out there. I don't know how well you can see me. Let me pull this up a little bit. Uh, this is Crash, our youth group that meets on Wednesday nights. I uh, just shared with everyone, this is our last night meeting here at this location. Next week we'll be meeting at my house. I'm going to open with a prayer. Father, as always, thank you for the young people that are here. Uh, God, the incredible desire, incredible desire to grow in their faith. Uh, sometimes, God, these young people put uh, us adults to shame. So I just pray, God, that you would teach us something again tonight. Amen. Okay, uh, some of you got Bibles. I'll, uh, I'll have you turn to, I'm going to give you a, a scripture when we, so we get to it. You'll be ready to, uh, to, uh, to look. Uh, you, does that have the Old Testament in it? Yes. Okay, go to First Chronicles, chapter 29. Uh, Aiden, you're going to go to Psalms 40. Isla, you're going to go to Psalm 73. Anthony, you're going to go to Proverbs 11. Destiny, Matthew 9. Oh, uh, come and get one right here. Come and get one right here. Uh, and that's good for now. We'll, uh, we'll look at the others afterwards. Okay, here's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about... Um, um, we all, have, we all have certain desires in our life. Uh, desires is things that we want to do, that we strongly want to do. Like, like some of you may have a desire to go to college. How many of you have a desire to go to college? Okay, we've got a couple people in here that got a desire to go to college. Your hand went up a little slow over there. Uh, how many of you have a desire to finish high school? Ah, more hands going up, but some not going up. Ray, you have a desire to finish high school? Yeah, okay. How many have a desire to find a mate? The only one. No. <laughs> uh, to find a boy. How many? Say, hey, seriously, anybody got a desire to have to find a boyfriend or a, girl, a good boyfriend or a good girlfriend? You are looking for a good girlfriend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, are you are you looking for for someone, Sammy? You should be. You're at that age now. You're how old are you now, Sammy? Eighteen or nineteen? Seventeen. Oh, seventeen. You graduated early. Seventeen. So anyway, those are some desires that we have, things that we that we strongly want. Uh, what are some of your de yes? Oh no, I'll, I'll tell you later. Uh, what are some of your desires? Tell me some of your desires. Somebody start telling me something you do. What's your desire? Going back to sports. Oh, going back to playing sports. That's a good one. Getting closer to God. Ooh, you took the right out. You used to look at my sheet, didn't you? Yeah. Good one. Anybody else? What desires do you have? Aiden. Training dogs. Training dogs. She wants to, when she gets older, she wants to train dogs, either military or police force. I want my kids to come back to church. Oh, Wow. What a great desire that is. Hey, uh, Isla. Um, practice art. I didn't hear that. Practice art. Oh, okay. Aiden. For your family? To get close to your family? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else got desires? I know that Harrison was asking on Sunday if, if VBS was going to need someone to do the lyrics and all that kind of stuff. Uh, he's just really enjoying, uh, and he's good at that sort of thing. So I could see him being into computers one day. So we all have desires, okay? One of our, one of our greatest desires that we should have is what Sammy said, to, to be a stronger Christian, uh, to be strong in our faith, uh, to better know the Bible, uh, to better know how to pray. Uh, I would love to get to the point in this group here where you were all so comfortable that when I said, who wants to close with prayer, all your hands go up. Because right now when I ask someone who wants to pray, no hands go up hardly because you don't feel comfortable yet praying. Uh, you will never feel, let me just, this is not what we're talking about, but here's one of the best ways to ever learn how to be comfortable praying. How many of you have a prayer time on your own? We, we, we have a time where you pray. A few of you? Okay. Whenever you pray, here's what I challenge you to do. Pray out loud. Pray out loud. Even if it's, even if it's a whisper. 
get used to, to vocalizing your, your prayers. When you do that, it makes it much more comfortable for you then to be able to pray in a group setting. Yes? Well, I, that's, but again, that's, that's, why, that's why I said we should have a desire to want to learn how to pray because that is one of the things. Oh, do you have your hand up? Oh, because I can remember when I used to be afraid to, to pray. I used to go to different groups, and when, they, when they'd ask someone to pray, and I, and I would look up, and then they would pick me, and it would be like, oh, God, why did I look up? I shut my eyes down. Uh, it's scary when you don't know how to pray. Only people that feel comfortable praying are people that have a prayer life. So we, so hopefully you have a strong desire to learn how to pray. And one of the best ways to learn is to be in a group like this where you hear people like Tressa or myself praying, then you learn how to pray. And then we all should have a desire to just be a good person. So we're going to hear what God has to say about, about desires, okay? Uh, you're in, in First Chronicles, you're going to read 29, 18. You're going to read Psalm 48. You're going to read Psalm 73, 25? 73, what verse? 8. Okay. 40, oh, I see, uh, chapter 40, verse 8. You're going to read Proverbs 3, uh, 3, 15? And, I give you Proverbs 11, verse. Oh, I, okay. And what I give you? Matthew. Matthew 9, 13? Okay, then I'm going to give you Proverbs 3, 15. Look up Proverbs 3, 15. Okay. So if everybody, it's up to you whether you want to turn to them or not, but go ahead and read First Chronicles 29, 18. Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, keep, the, keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. Okay, what he's saying is, is it's, it's like, I want to, I want to keep my, our, my people close to you, Lord. And that would be my prayer. I would, I would want to say what he said. I, I, I want to, I want my desire is to help bring you all closer to the Lord. That's why I do this, okay? And so it excites me when I hear different people, like what I've heard Xavier share before about his desire is to, to he wanted to come to Crash because Crash was more serious because he was, he wanted to be serious about his faith. I've heard Manny share that many, many times. That that excites me because that's my job. My job is to get you excited about your faith, to get you to have a strong desire to grow in your faith. So when that happens, then I know that I'm doing my job because that is my job. And no different than you and when you have your small group of boys, when you have a small group of girls, when you have your small group, your, your desire should be that they are growing in their faith, not just that they all say, oh man, I love Anthony, I love Anthony he's my faith. It's not, it's not about liking you. It's about them growing in their faith. Can I read? Oh, okay. Yeah, you're in uh, Psalm 40, read verse 8. Okay. Go ahead. I desire to do your will in my God. Your laws will be my God. Okay. What did, what did you hear God say there? Well, God wrote the word. God wrote the word. It's David, but but these are God's words. God, so what what did David say? Okay. So what? So David is saying, "I have a desire to do what? To do your will. will." So what David is saying is, and when he's writing these songs, that God, I have a desire to do your will. I have a desire to do what you want me to do. And I hope that that's the same with all you people. I hope that you have a desire to do what God wants you to do. And we know that God doesn't want us to sin. We know that. So our desire should be that we don't sin. And then our desire should be what God wants us to do. What, what are some of the things that God wants us to do? What? Um, be a Christian. Be a Christian. Okay, Ray. Grow in your faith. Love. Love. Pray. There you go. He just wants you to talk to him. God's biggest desire is for you to talk to him. 
That's your dad's desire. That's your mom's desire. You're, you're, you're a mom, Teresa. Don't, don't you, that's in that your desire that your kids would call you and want to talk to you? Yes. That's the strongest desire that Aaron, Aaron calls me at least once or twice, sometimes three times a week. That just warms my heart that he has a desire to want to talk to me. And here he is almost 50 years old, and before he hangs up, he always says, I love you, Dad. It's like, oh, gosh. So when you pray and talk to God and then close it up with saying, tell God I love you, that excites God as much as it excites me. So God wants you to do his will. His will is, well, here's one of his wills, just being here tonight. You're, you're doing God's will by being here tonight because you get to hear what God has to say. Okay, Psalm 73, 25. Keep going. Okay, it's my says, he's saying, Whom have I in heaven but you, God? And earth has nothing that I desire besides you, God. So he's saying, I, I, I desire you, God, and there's nothing on earth that compares to you. There's nothing on earth that compares to God. So, so he's saying, I desire God more than anything. And again, that's what my prayer is for you guys. That you would get to a point in your life where you desire God more than anything. Let me just share with it where I'm at. Right this weekend, my my whole family is having a family reunion back in uh, in Bismarck, North Dakota. Uh, that everybody's going back to. I didn't go back this weekend because I sure it would have been fun, get to see relatives that I haven't seen for a long time. But my desire is to help Collision to grow, to help the youth groups to grow. That takes priority over that. This weekend, uh, at a class reunion in my hometown, uh, that all the people, I'm looking up on Facebook and all the, the people that I went to class with that graduated are all there. But I'm not there because I have a desire to help you people grow. I choose you over myself. And that's what he's saying here. Uh, Earth has nothing for me to offer compared to God. Okay, Proverbs 3.15. Okay, we're talking, uh, let me just, before you read it, he's talking about wisdom here. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs is about wisdom. And so Solomon is talking about how, what, what wisdom means to him. So go ahead and read verse, verse 15 now. It says, wisdom is more precious than, 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 than rubies, than precious jewels. N not, n nothing you desire can compare with it. Anybody know what wisdom is? What's the definition of wisdom? Hey, I can't hear. I can hear. What? Oh, that's close. Choose the right decision. Oh, that's good. To make the best decision possible. Wisdom is the ability to make the best decision possible. And what and what he's saying here, or David is saying here, or Solomon is saying here is. With that kind of wisdom is more precious to me than jewels. More precious to, it would be more. It would be like saying it's more precious than winning the lottery. I lie. Water. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go get. Go get one. Okay. Uh, Proverbs eleven twenty three. Who's got? Oh, uh, Anthony. The desire of the righteous ends only in good, but the hope of the wicked only in wrath. So if you desire, if, if you desire good things or, or the right the right things that are right with God, it always ends up good good. When you desire other things, many times it just ends up it, it just ends up bad. Uh, but anytime you desire God's things, it always ends up good. Okay. One more, Matthew 9.13.
So what does he what does God desire? Mercy. Anybody have any idea what mercy is? Okay, pretty good. Pretty good. Like a second chance? Yeah, that's really good. Gosh, that is really good. Wow. I like that. It's compassion. Having compassion. Caring about others, especially the less fortunate. Giving people a second chance. I like that. God said he desires that more than, what did it say? More than sacrifice. So what that means is at that time, and at that time, the people would bring their animals and make sacrifices to God to atone their sin. It would be like to please God. They would bring their sacrifices to please God. And God said, hey, if you want to please me, don't, don't do sacrifices. Have mercy. Care about other people. Have compassion. Give them a second chance. I like that. Okay, I'm going to read now. Boom. Okay, this is interesting now. This is the great Paul, okay? Uh, probably one of the, the mightiest warriors that God ever had was, uh, was Paul. And Paul is sharing here in Romans his struggle, his, his struggle to do, to, to do what, he, what he desires, to do the things that he wants to do. So, so listen to me. In fact, everybody turn to it. If you've got a Bible, go to Romans chapter 7. Take your Bible and go to Romans chapter 7. Seven eighty six. Seven eighty six in your Bibles. You know, like <laughs> okay, everybody's there. Chapter seven, verse fifteen. Okay, I'm going to start reading. This is what Paul says: I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I end up doing. You hear what he's saying? So I don't understand. The things that I don't want to do, those, that's what I keep on doing. And the things that I want to do, I end up not doing them. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good as it is. It is no longer I myself who do it, but it is the sin living in me. It's kind of like when you do the things you don't want to do, it's because you have a sinful nature. We all, just have, we, we, we all do that. We all do things that we know we shouldn't be doing. And everybody struggles with that. Verse 18. I know that nothing good lives in me. That is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do, it's the evil I do that I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. So listen to Paul now. The, the mighty Paul talking about how he struggles says, now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So here's the mighty Paul that struggles with the same thing that many of you struggle with, that all of you struggle with. Every one of you, if I asked you how many of you do things that you don't want to do, but you end up doing them, all our hands would go up. And then how many of you want to do certain things, but you don't even end up not doing them, and then all our hands go up. I bet you there's been times where you've said, you know what, I'm going to, maybe it's, I'm going to go with Dandy too when he, when, next time when he helps, when he goes to help the poor. And then, yeah, and I'm not going. I'm going to go with Dawn when she goes to feed the homeless and you end up not going. Oh, I'm not going to hang out with my friend because if I do, I know I'm going to get in trouble and you end up hanging out with him. We all do things that we know we shouldn't do and then we don't do things that we know we should do. Why? Because we have a sin nature in us. We still have that old sin nature in us. And it's never going to leave us. It's going to be there until the day we die. So what God wants is God wants us to have the right desires, the desires that help us to grow. Our, he wants us to have a desire to grow in our faith. He wants us to have a desire to learn more about the Bible. He wants us to have a desire to learn how to pray. He wants us to have a desire. Because when you do those things, then you satisfy God. But when you start doing the things that he doesn't want you to do, then you... What, what's the number one thing that sin does to you? What's the number one thing sin does to you? 
pulls you away from very good. Gosh, Isla. Great. You should have had you here a long time ago. You're smarter than all the rest of the people in this room. You're way smarter than Destiny. Oh, you're gonna lead the group, you're gonna lead the group tonight, right? <laughs> sin, sin separates us from God. So whenever I hear people say, oh, I just don't feel that close to God right now, I can guarantee you you're doing things that you're not supposed to be doing. Because that's what Paul is talking about here. That's what he's talking about. Uh, and the last one says that we should desire spiritual gifts. Uh, have you, all of you, each of you have. And then it says we should have a desire to pray for one another. So we're going to close with that. <clears throat> anybody in here that prays for, for anybody on a regular basis, anybody in this room? Is there anybody that prays for anybody in this room? I pray for church. Does that okay, count? yes, yes. Yeah, that's good. You pray for the church. That's good. I, I have a whole list that I pray for every single morning. Most of it is health related. But I was praying for the Joneses for the long time, longest time when they were trying to make that decision about what they're going to do with, with their life, whether they're going to move to Florida, whether he was going to move there and then the family was going to stay back here until the boys graduated. I was praying hard for that. I'm going to, one of the things I'm going to start praying, I'm glad you pray for the church. I, I, how come I don't do that? <laughs> uh, you start praying for, in fact, uh, Dawn brought that up Sunday morning. She was saying, we, we need to all be praying about the direction. Instead of just making decisions, we need to pray first and then make the decision, which makes sense. Okay, thanks for watching out there. Uh, we're going to hope you join us next week. We'll be on my front patio. So thanks for joining, okay? Have a great night. Bye.